Hey, what's up everyone? I wanted to go over a brief tutorial here to kind of give you guys some guidance um, for some quick math tricks that you can use to kind of replicate shots with various different clubs. So the very first thing that I do want to just point out, if I was to go to the help here, first off, you know, you'll see all these important documents, but if you were to scroll over to additional resources all the way over here to the side, you'll see a lot of video demonstrations. Here you can see how to use the app in TorPlay. Here you can see app help, just being able to show you all the features that the app can do for both. This is the Android version, but iOS has the exact same uh, tutorials for that version as well. You know, basic ring play. Um, here's some older videos that uh, will also go over the tours for you. You'll also see, you know, some of the advanced techniques that you could learn, hook slice, stuff like that, dunking, secondary wind effect, for example. So those are in there for you to learn from. Now, with that being said, I'm going to try to get this video in there as well. I think it has the same kind of level of importance that you guys can really benefit from. So let's take a look at a couple different cases here that I wanna talk about. So first let's go to this shot. You can see kind of, this, this is how I've been playing this shot. So at 14 seconds, first off, you know, let me talk about the spin. I've been basically putting it for top spin and all the way over on the, uh, the side spin there. So here you can see that I'm just stopping it right here. You can see I'm right at max club with a power three ball with a quarterback 10. You can see over towards the left, it says plus 15 yards. Why does it say that? Because a Kingmaker ball has a power boost of 7%. The baseline value for the QB 10 is 218 yards. This can be found in the game. So if it's 218 yards multiplied by 7%, you'll get a value of approximately, it's 15 point something. The only thing that gets reported is the integer. So you'll see that it is 15 yards at the actual max line. I am actually at the max line with this shot. Now let's take a look at just what I do here for the shot. I basically just use, you know, what max ring adjustment would be, which is essentially, you know, nine rings. And then I just max curl it, making sure to not add any overpower. And you can see that it stays safely away from the edge and just cuts right into the center of the fairway. This gets me very easily into the range where I can still go at the green and get there in two and potentially make an easy albatross. So let's go back to the setup here because I want to talk about a couple things. Now, what if, you know, you wanted to do this exact same shot with a Rock 8 and you wanted to replicate it, for example, because Rock 8 also still has four topspin. So I could still replicate this. So what is the baseline of Rock 8? It's 226. So that's a difference of eight yards, which means I have to come back eight yards to get to this same spot from the baseline club. So if I was to take rock and put it at, instead of going into plus 15, if I was to put it at plus zero, which is right at the max, like, well, it's not the max line, but it's the max line for a basic ball. So if I was to put it right at plus zero yards and count backwards eight yards, then I could position this in the exact same spot. So another thing that I want to go over is this is the Golf Clash Notebook. If you've ever been to the website, mm -hmm. it's uh, golfclashnotebook.io. And you'll see that this is under Tools. And then after going into Tools, Shot Over Power Tool. So the first thing that, you know, you know, why I have this in here, let's just talk about this real quick. So one of the things that you'll see is it'll say yards and rings. You can see that on this slider. So let's only focus at this one. So inside one ring with an extra mile, six, for example, where I just had it, it was five. It was five yards in one ring there. 4.8 to five, you know, somewhere in there. Um, that means that if you were to two ring great ball, a 
extra mile, for example, you're going to miss your target by roughly 10 yards. That's why this is such a bad tour club. So I did just want to kind of, you know, mention that. And that's also another reason why when you're hook slicing, if you're not very careful to get the exact point every time, you might actually miss on hook slice by quite a bit as well because there's that much error in one ring for an extra mile. Now, let's, you, you know, I do want to just go over a couple of these. You know, you guys are big APOC fans, uh, APOC 5, for instance. A common misconception is to just use the accuracy. So if, if I was looking at APOC 5, you know, the accuracy would be 75. A lot of guys would say, oh, that's 1.5 per ring. Does that mean that there's 1.5 yards? That's the misconception. It's not. It's not at all. It's actually much closer to three. So if I was to go in here and try to set up one ring, a little bit easier if I zoom in here, you know, three to 3.2 yards in one ring for a POC 5. Now, all this information was discovered by essentially, you know, counting green grids, also, you know, using counting pixels on the screen. So, um, you know, a lot of hard work went into building not only this tool, but to get you guys this data that is usable. So at three yards, roughly, per one ring, that means that five rings, for example, is 15 yards. So, you know, that is an important fact to know. And as accuracy changes, this number is also going to change. If I was to switch to Apocalypse 3, for instance, you'll see that, uh, you know, it's much closer to, what was that, 4? Like, maybe about 4? About 4 here? 4.1, 4.2? Maybe 4.2 to 4.4, somewhere in there. So, you can see that there's a lot of error in these rings. So, that's why your great balls are such a big deal and why using something like a quarterback... Because let's let's go ahead and go to the rock right now because we were just talking about trying to replicate this shot. I said that rock 8, for example, is 226. Rock 7 is 221. So if I needed to rep replicate kind of that landing zone um, with a rock 8, for instance, I would need to come back 8 yards. So let's look at rock 8 and see how many yards are in a ring because it's not 1.0. It's more like 2.0. That means I would need to come back four rings to get to that exact identical spot. Okay, so hopefully that makes some sense to you guys. One ring has two yards inside of it of error. But you can see, comparing that to extra mile, for example, if I was to great ball an extra mile two rings, I'm missing by 10 yards. If I was to great ball a... Um, Rock, for instance, by missing outside the white ring, right on the out, outer edge of the white ring, five ring pull would be equivalent to a two ring pull for an extra mile. That's why it's so accurate and why it's so useful to have this club, especially in tours when you can, because those major differences between five yards inside of a ring don't come, in, come back to haunt you. And that's why, you know, a lot of times you miss your targets. And you just got to be really careful with that concept. So let's take a look, you know, with that fact in mind, let's go back to the video and let's look at the this adjustment. So let's say I wanted to go and replicate this exact landing zone with Rock 8. What I would need to do is I would need to pull back four rings because we just mentioned that 226 take away eight yards is 218. And that's the base power value. These values can be found in the Golf Clash notebook, uh, in the Golf Clash app itself. So if you've never used this at all, um, you know these values are here for you to be to to be found. So Rock has a base of 226, a POC seven, a POC five, a POC six all have 240 as a baseline. Quarterback has a 218 baseline, and similarly with balls, if I was to go to Kingmaker. You'll see if you click on the power, you'll see that it tells you 7% farther as well. So all these values are in game. So let's go back to this spot here real quick and just talk about this because what I would need to do if I needed to replicate just to get to this land zone so I could get back to the exact same land zone, I would need to pull back eight rings in this case. 
no, not eight rings, eight yards, four rings. So if I was to take rock and go to the plus zero marker and pull back four rings in this exact line to get it to this position, that means that that would be in this exact position. Okay, that would be an equivalent shot. That means all I would need to do from that place would just play one per ring from that point. So after I pull back the four rings to get it to this point, I would just pull my rings as usual. You guys saw me pull about nine rings. I would still need to go an additional nine rings for this went. I'm just playing these basically one per ring for the, uh, for the win, just for simplicity. So um, similarly, if I needed to do this with a quarterback, let, or not, let, let's say I wanted to do it with an apocalypse and I wanted to you know, replicate this exact same thing. So I would set up my spin identical. I probably wouldn't use five rings because we just mentioned that the rings are a lot different. But you'll see that three rings is kind of close to five rings. So I can adjust, for example, three rings from the edge instead of five rings from the edge. So let's look at something like a POC 3, for example. It's going to have 231 as the base. And we just looked this up. It was about, what, 4, 4.2? It was like 4.2 per ring for a POC 3, give or take, based on what I just you know punched into the overpower tool. That means I would need to pull back 13 yards. That's three rings. That's three rings. So if I was to set up at zero yards plus zero, not plus 15 because it'll let me go into overpower. If I was to pull it back all the way to plus zero and then pull in three rings, I could get to this exact same spot with Apocalypse 3. Keep it in mind that I need to still use the same Powerball. Little differences in Powerball is going to change this, but you can still do those calculations if you so do to choose to do so. But let's just say you want to use the same Powerball as me to kind of hit the same shots as me. It's going to make it the most simple case. However, you know, knowing the differences between the Powerballs, you know, you can kind of work the math as well. You know, Power 3 is 7%, Power 4 is 10%, stuff like that. You can actually work that math out and you could kind of add in, subtract in the differences yourself. Um, might want to use paper <laughs> and pen and a calculator for that, just to, just to kind of double check your work. But it's the same type of trick here. So now that I've talked about that one, let's go to the next example that I wanted to talk about. So here you can see an Epoch 6. Now what I've been doing for this hole is I've been setting up at plus 7. Let me get into where I have the spin. I've been using about five and a half spin here. That's very close to a POC 5 max spin. So that's why I've been using that spin because I want to be able to replicate it with not only a POC 7, a POC 6, but a POC 5. All three clubs I can set up at plus 7 because they're all 240 baseline. Let's look at a different club. For example, let's look at Thor's Hammer. Say you have a Thor's Hammer 5. Its base is 232. It's a difference of eight yards. That means I would need to pull a Thor's hammer, five for instance, to 232 at max power, plus, well, not at max, but the 232 base, but instead of using the plus seven as my starting value, I would need to use plus 15 to replicate this, to get it to this exact point, because that's eight yards more. So you'll see with a lesser power club, you'll need to go more into overpower. Similarly, we can look at things like Thor's four, for, for instance. With a Thor four, it's gonna have 229 power. It's a difference of 11 yards. I need it to say plus 18. Well, the only way I can get plus 18 with a Thor's hammer is going to be with a power four ball. So I would need to go into a power four ball and put it to the plus 18 to get it to this exact same target zone to where I could just kind of mirror the top spin. Similarly, we could do this with rock. Now with rock, eight, for, for instance, it's going to have a lot of curl. That would be the benefit as to why you would still want to do rock. However, you're only going to have four top spin. So it's not going to roll out quite as far if you copy this land zone. However, one of the things that you could do is you could try to move it up 
And, you know, if you wanted to kind of hit it, maybe eight extra yards, you could maybe use plus 15 because it doesn't have as much top spin. So let's just say, first off, that I wanted to imitate this plus seven with a rock eight. That's with a power three ball or whatever. Um, it's not going to be possible because I'm going to need it to say since rock is 226, I'm going to need it to have 14 extra yards to match this base power to be the 240. So to be the 240, I need to compare to the 226 is 14 extra yards, which means the plus seven needs to be plus 21 on rock eight. So if on rock eight, I needed to say plus 21, the only way that's possible is with a power four ball mm -hmm. at a minimum. That's the absolute minimum because that gives you a 10% modifier and you'll see that it tops out at plus 21 yards for a rock. However, you might want to go into slight overpower. As I was mentioning, you might want to use about maybe eight yards of overpower because you're not going to get as much rollout. You may even want to use 10 yards of overpower. So if you wanted to replicate that shot, for instance, with the Rock 8, as I was just mentioning, you know, we'll basically assume that we're going to be using the Power 4 and we're going to, you know, I, I just basically said that plus 21 yards, which is exactly what this is, it basically sets up, you can see that Power 4, versus um, um, power zero ball is essentially 22 yards about. So it's about 22 yards. You'll see that it's very, very close to the max line. So um, you'll see that that adds 22 yards to this. So that means you'll almost be at the max line just mm -hmm. one yard short. You'll, you'll just be one yard short from the max. So if I wanted to add eight yards of overpower, um, I'd use one extra for the ball to get it to, you know, just that one extra since I said that it could be 20 plus 22 yards. And then, for instance, I could pull this into, you know, six, seven yards of overpower. I can look at what the needle color is. Seven yards of overpower, for example. And if I needed to replicate that landing zone with a power four and to be able to get it kind of just a little bit farther, you can see the needle color and kind of where the ball is pulled back to. So you can use that for your benefit to try to mirror that shot for a rock eight. So hopefully all this is, you know, coming together for you. I did just want to kind of go over this and briefly describe this. Um, the, the biggest reason is, is because there's no real markers out here. How can you really see where you're trying to aim? for these shots you can see that there's no real markers sometimes you, you wouldn't need to do this if there was bunkers out there and i could just position the rings or something but you can see there's nothing really out here it's kind of like a dead zone there's nothing to aim at and use these for a frame of reference so i wanted to put this together for you guys to to make these calculations in case you wanted to do them for yourself and just try to find equivalencies to try to mirroring my land zones so good luck with this. Hopefully you find this video helpful. Um, let me know, uh, you know, how your tournaments are going. Feel free to comment it. Let me know how you guys are doing. Um, good luck out there, guys. Catch you guys on the next one.